Good afternoon. My name is Professor Jeff Fleming, and I'm here today to teach you the law of trusts for the exam solution. Welcome to the course. What I'd like you to do is open up to your page one of your outline. Where we're going today is really trying to achieve four goals in our exam solution that we do in all of our classes. First thing we want to do on page number one is I want to teach you a checklist to the class. Now, trust is one of those areas where the issues do not jump off the page. So what I have on the board over here, trust checklist, is really a mini version of what I have on page number one of the outline. And what you're going to do for me is when you walk in a trust question on an exam for your professor or the bar exam, what you'll do is you'll immediately write down the five basic topics of trust law. Once you have these topics down, you're going to have to go into the exam and try to find the issues because one of the problems in trust, the issues hide themselves. It's really unlike a torts question, for example, or a crimes question where the issues jump off the page. In trust, you have to really weave through the facts and really understand what's going on in the fact pattern. So number one goal is to teach you a checklist for the class. Number two, what we're going to do is we're going to review the black order law. Now, the black order law in the outline runs, in this particular outline, it's fairly short. It runs from page number three. Uh, all the way over to about page number 18. Keep in mind that trust many times in a law school class is also taught as part of wills. They call this trust in estates. I prefer to teach these separately in the exam solution. If I were to combine wills and trust today, it would probably take us about eight hours to teach the, the, the uh, subject appropriately. So that's why I want to teach trust by itself. That's why the outline is shorter. And I would say between the two subjects, wills is more difficult than trust, without a doubt. So don't be, you know, uh, shock, shocked by the length of the outline, you know, unlike contracts or torts or property, because the material is still difficult and the professor can still hurt you in the area of examsmanship. Once we go through the Blackwater Law today with an emphasis on how the issues come up, because in trust law, I have to really give you a lot of fact patterns in order for you to spot the issues on the exam, because the law is fairly simplistic. The third thing we're going to do is give you approaches. So do me a favor and turn, if you will, to page 19 of your booklet for today. And you'll see on page 19 that we have something called the trust approaches. Now, we're going to give you an approach to how to create a trust, because most times on an exam, you're going to have to do that. We're going to give you different types of trusts. There are like 9 to 10, 11 different types of trusts that could pop up on a trust exam, depending upon the fact pattern. We're also going to give you an approach how to write trustee supervision. We call it AOL, authority, obligations, liabilities. And the reasons I like to provide you with approaches are many facets. Right? Why? Because number one, uh, multifaceted, I should say. Number one, because if you can spot the issue, you, you got to know how to write it. And this is the problem with trust. It's, number, it's a two-pronged error here. One, if you can't spot the issue, you can't use the approach. Number two, if you spot the issue, don't know the approach, you can't write it. So to me, it's we really have to develop not only a way to spot issues, but we also have to develop approaches for you if you see the issue this is how I tack it on the examination. The fourth goal in this class is review some examinations. Now, the exams start in the back, and they begin on page 20 of your outline. We have three examinations for you, exam one, two, and three. Exam one and two we will do in class today when we finish my subs law lecture. Exam number three is for your use at home. What I'd highly recommend you do is practice these exams even when you come out of the class under time conditions so that when you walk into your final or the bar examination, you're well prepared to handle this type of examination on the, your test taking, whatever test taking format you have in law school.